السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ٹوڈے وی گن ٹو سورت الانعام اینڈ سورہ نمبر 6 اٹس ان جوس 7 اٹ سٹارٹس ان جوس 7 لیٹس بیگن وتھ دا دعا نحمد و نصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری واحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی رب زدنی علم آمین سو فرسٹ ویل سی پیریڈ آف ریولیشن دا ہول آف دا سورہ واس ریویل ایٹ ون ٹائم ڈیورنگ دا لاسٹ ایئر آف دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اسٹے ایٹ مکہ اینڈ دا ٹریڈیشن انڈیکیٹس دیٹ اٹ واز ڈکٹیٹڈ بائی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دا سیم ایوننگ دیٹ اٹ واز ریویلڈ سو دس از مکی سورہ major issues divine laws and guidance refutation of shirk worship other deities besides allah and guidance towards tauhid oneness of god reality of life after death and the day of judgment clarification of self imposed prohibition by the jews that were falsely attributed to allah and allah's commandments are not irrational taboos but uh, form the fundamental moral principles of the islamic society and answer to the objections raised against the person and the mission of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam comfort and encouragement is provided to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his followers who were at that time in a state of anxiety and despondency and admonitions warning and threats are given to the disbelievers to give up their apathy and haughtiness and prohibition of dividing the religion into sects uh, allah requires the believers to declare my salah my devotion my life and my death are all for allah and you will come to know in the end of the surah this ayas will come inna salati wa nusuki ma hiya and it is important to know that the above issues have not been discussed under the separate heading rather the discourage discourse goes on a continuous whole and these topics are discussed over and over from different angles it's not specified like you know this topic but you know what all we going to discuss in this sura i'm just generalizing that the discussion revolves uh, around the major issues of faith to heed prophethood and life after death and the erroneous beliefs of the mushrikeen and provides answer to the objection it also comforts prophet and sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his followers who were then suffering from persecution by the disbelievers surah starts bismillahir rahmanir rahim and here uh, it has 165 verses surah al an'am an'am is from nam and nam uh, usually refers to camel but here uh, you know uh, mention about different livestock okay so this will be about different livestock bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillah allazi khalaqa as-samawati wal ardha wa ja'ala zulumati وَنُور ظُلُمَاتٍ وَنُورُهُ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ يَعْدِلُونَ All praises be to Allah the one who has created the heavens and the earth and made the darknesses and light yet the unbelievers set up equal partners with their rabb So here all praises is due to Allah who created heavens and the earth and made darknesses and the light then those disbelief equate others with their lord this who created you from clay and then decree the term and specify time uh, specify time known to him then still you are in dispute in ayah number 3 and he is allah the only deity in the heaven and the earth he knows your secret what you make public and he knows that which you earn means allah is fully aware of what we do whether we say something or we keep in our hearts whether we express it or we hide it nothing is hidden from allah 
and if that is the case then the means that we must refrain from disobeying allah out of his fear we do not disobey him neither in public nor in private neither in our heart nor from our mouth or our limbs and secondly this means that if a mistake has happened then what do we need to do seek forgiveness there is a hadith regarding that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one of his most common duas would be allahumma gfirli ma aqdatu wa ma ta'amattu wa ma asrartu wa ma alantu wa ma jahiltu wa ma ta'amad the most common dua of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that oh allah forgive me of what i have done by accident that is by khata and forgive me for what i have done deliberately you know ta'amadtu and forgive me for what i have done secretly you know asrartu and what i have done openly ahlantu and ignorantly you know wajh you know, jahiltu and knowingly ta'amadtu so this is the dua we should memorize this dua because all of these mistakes happen right so this was the common dua prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used in another hadith we learn that once prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got up at night for the salat and then before he said the salam and after tashhad uh, and he was sitting prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua he said allahumma gfirli ma qaddamtu wa ma aqartu wa ma asrartu wa ma alantu wa ma asraftu wa ma anta allamul bihi minni anta muqaddim wa anta muakhir la ilaha illa anta oh allah forgive me for the earlier and the later open and the secret those that i did knowingly those that you know of better than i you are the first and the last there is no god but you la ilaha illa anta so even before saying salam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is seeking forgiveness why because allah knows what we are ya lamu sirrakum wajhara wajharakum wa ya lamu ma taksibun he knows your secret and what you make public and that which you earn because sometimes we say something and we don't even know what we have earned we do something we don't even know that we have earned we look at something we listen to something and we don't even know what we have earned so we commit sins without even realizing it without even thinking so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua that oh allah whatever sins i have committed and you know the best about what i have done you forgive me for all of them the fact is that none of us uh, is an uh, angel isn't it anybody sitting over here like you know whether you are listening to this or whether you are coming to class but we are not perfect perfect is only allah subhanahu wa taala so especially when we are alone then what happens it easier to make mistakes by why because no people are there so the fear of people is also not there that's why shaitan when he sitting next to us we forget to say auzu billah we forget our morning duas or evening azkar we didn't say bismillah and what will happen shaitan is with us and is not going to leave us alone he is not going to leave us alone he is going to keep telling us you know uh, keep telling us until we end up even a small mistake and but we definitely error you know that that is his goal so remember when we are alone making even a small mistake but what we have to do what we uh, that's his goal but we have to remember allah and we say auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim so nafs is constantly over and over repeatedly urges us to do evil to disobey allah and this is why in secret in private it is more difficult to control oneself likewise when it comes to the state of the heart when it uh, comes to our action our words can we control them somewhat yes we can but when it comes to the state of the 
heart nobody knows what we are thinking like uh, for example uh, like quite possible that the thoughts that are going in our, our mind are uh, maybe different kind of thoughts it may go sometimes negative and positive but when negative thought, thoughts come what we say and we want uh, to overcome with the thoughts isn't it there's a, another hadith prophet وسلم, he taught us a dua in the morning and the evening what is that dua allahumma inni a'udhu min sharri nafsi Oh Allah, protect me from the evil of my soul. So that's what Rasulullah taught us um, different du'as. So we have to follow the footsteps of uh, beloved Prophet Because the soul can be very mufsid. It can really cause a lot of harm to a person. Ayah number four. And no sign comes to them from the signs of their Lord except that they turn away from them. For they denied the truth when it comes to them. But there is going to reach them the news of what they used to ridicule. One day that uh, like you know they are denying but that news will come. That's what it says. Have they not seen how many generations we destroyed before them which we had established upon the earth. As we have not established you and we sent rain, rain from the sky upon them in showers and made rivers flow beneath them then we destroyed them for their sins and brought forth after them a generation of the others you know how many generation allah destroyed and he replaced one generation with the another and if we have sent down to you oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a written scripture on a page exactly as the people demand you know if a written scripture was sent down and they touched it with their own hand. The disbelievers would say this is not but obvious magic. Because they, they want to deny because of the takabur and because of the haughtiness. In ayah number 8 and they say why was they not sent down to him an angel. It's now a new demand you know. But if we had sent down an angel the matter would have been decided. Then they would not be reprieved. It means that, you know, if angel would have been sent, then Allah will take the retribution. And if we had made him an angel, we would have made him appear as a man. And we would have covered them with that in which they cover themselves. Meaning their confusion still would not go away. In ayah number 10, and already were messengers ridiculed before you. But those who mock them were enveloped by that which they used to ridicule. And say, travel through the land and observe how was the end of the deniers. In ayah number 12, ma samawati wal ard. To whom belongs whatever is heaven and earth. Say, it belongs to who? Allah. Allah owns all of this. Kataba ala nafsihi rahma. He has decreed upon himself mercy. And an, uh, Surah Al Anam is a Makki Surah. And remember that this Surah was revealed when Prophet was migrating to Medina. And this Surah, when it was revealed, an entire group of angels came down with it. Entire group of angels came down. And delegation came down. And with this Surah, Angel Jibrail did not come alone. A group of angels came and the surah was revealed in one go. Like you know, uh, in one khutbah. It was like in one go. Prophet ﷺ received the surah and the theme of the surah, Tawheed. Uh, uh, like believing in Allah. Only one God, the only creator, the only deserving of worship. This is the theme of the surah and that, that is why we see in this surah here so many uh, sifat of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are mentioned. What are sifat attributes? If you remember the you know uh, attribute of Allah when we started the Quran that time uh, I told you about uh, reflecting the meaning of the Quran and also uh, different names of Allah and names generally we do notice them but when it comes to attributes Allah we tend to neglect them so over here in this ayah Allah says 
لمن ما في السماء لم لمن ما في السماوات والأرض. What attribute is that we learn about Allah? What attribute that He is the owner, He is the master, that everything belongs to Him. There is nothing at all except that Allah owns it. There is nothing at all except that Allah owns it. Now, this world, if we start listening the things that are there in this world, the list about would be endless. And the world compared to the universe is nothing. The problem is that we read over this and we don't even think about it. I want you to feel, I want you to think about what you are listening to, what you are reading. To whom belongs whatever is in heaven and whatever is in earth? Who does it belong to? Who do we belong to? Allah, Allah, and this is the Lord. Who is He? Kataba ala nafsihi rahma. He has decreed upon Himself mercy. Liyajma annakum ila yomil qiyamati la raiba fi. He will surely assemble you for the day of resurrection, about which there is no doubt. Those who will lose themselves that day do not believe. Prophet ﷺ said, when Allah completed the creation, he wrote in his book, which is with him on his throne, that my mercy over power my anger. And in ayah number 13, Balahuma sakana fil layli wa nahar. And to him belong that which repose by night and by day. Why does it belong to him? Something that rests in the night or something that rests during the day. Why does it belong to him? How does it belong to him? Because he is malik. And that means even the crawling ants that you see crawling around everywhere. What happened to them at night? Hidden. They go and rest. All day long, you see birds fly around chirping, making noise. But then what happens at the night time? They stop. They rest. So anything moving that we see, moving, moving. And then what happens? It stops. Who does it belong to? It belongs to Allah. Wahwa Samiul Alim. He is the all hearing, all knowing. Thing is that we really want to worship Allah alone. If we truly want to fear Allah the way He should be feared, if we want to love Allah the way He should be loved, if we want to recognize Allah the way He should be recognized, if we really want to develop akhlaq, sincerity, then you know how that begins. It begins through reflection. Reflection on what? On Allah's creation, that everything that a person sees, even if it's moving and a person does not just think, oh, how annoying. No, you think this and this little and Allah made it. Allah knows where it is going. Have you ever found a fly going around in your house and you wonder where, where did it come from? Where is it going to go? What is going to eat? Where is it going to sit and where is it going to die? Is it going to able to leave the house or it's going to die before that? Every creature, small or big, moving or still, every creature belongs to who? Allah. He is the Qalik. He is the Malik. This is how great our Allah is. But we forget that. وَمَا قَدَرَهُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدَرِهِ If we come across a person who is very rich, we found out about a person who, ha who has become very rich, who has earned a lot of money. What is our concern? What did they do? What advice do they give? What books have they written? What articles have they written? What piece of advice do they give? We are desperate for the guidance. Why? Because we are so impressed with the material wealth. Who owns that person? Who owns whatever they have? But what about Allah? Are we concerned about that? We have seen, you know, many articles we read and many, many documentary we see 
just to know how this person earned that status. But what about Allah is guiding us? Why don't we listen to Allah? Ayah number 16, Qul say, Is it other than Allah that I should take a protector? Should I leave Allah and go seek others? No. Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Why it is he who feeds and it is not fed? This is beautifully mentioned. Why it is who feeds and it is not fed? Every creature is fed by Allah. And Allah does not need to be fed. Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, indeed I have been commanded to be the first among you who submit to Allah and was commanded, do not ever be of the polytheist. Ayah number 15, say, indeed I fear if I should disobey my Lord, the punishment of tremendous day. If I should disobey my Lord, then I am disobeying who? The master, the owner of everything. Therefore, disobeying him is something that is very, it's not very minor. It is something very serious. It's a very big thing. So I fear Prophet Wasallam has been told to say this, that if I disobey my Lord, I fear punishment of a tremendous day. Look at this ayah. Rasulullah Wasallam is saying that. Ayah number 16. My Yusraf. And who Yawma is in Faqad Rahma. He from whom it is averted that day, Allah has granted him mercy. Bazalika Fawzul Mubin. That is the clear attainment. Wa in Yamsaskallahu bidurri fala ka shifalahu illahu. And if Allah should touch you with adversity, there is no remover of it except Him. So, in yamsas ka bi khairi fa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And if he touches you with good, then he is over all things competent. Why? Because everything in his control. For he is the sole master, sole owner of the entire creation. What do we see here? That any harm, any adversity that strikes us, who can remove it? Only Allah. If it has struck us, it has struck us only by whose permission and will? Allah will. Now, recall that whatever you have suffered in life, bring to mind anything that, that you have suffered in life. Perhaps uh, you bumped into the side of your bed or perhaps you burnt yourself, you know, something or the other with the iron when you are ironing it. Perhaps you hurt yourself uh, while you were chewing the food. Something or the other. These are all what? Dar, durar. Perhaps you lost something very precious to you. Perhaps something that very precious to you broke by your own hands. These are all what forms? Darar. Nothing of this darar happened except by Allah's will. So whatever the things we are doing it, like it's our mistake, you know, if I bump myself into a bed by me or the hurting myself, that's because Allah will, I hurt my tongue while chewing, but it was my khata, my mistake. But without the permission of Allah, nothing will happen. <coughs> so here Prophet ﷺ said, no eye quiver, no vein quiver from pain. What does it happen by that the queer from pain? Because when your eyes are hurting, is it as if they are shivering, like almost like queering, right? When you have pain somewhere deep inside also, pain is like a movement inside. Even if it's very subtle, deep, it's movement. Nothing like this happens. Except that it is because of the sins that servant has committed and Allah pardons much. You know, whatever the sins we do, we, we get the pains, but Allah forgive us. Allah uh, forgive us much, meaning He does not punish us because every wrong thing that we have done, now remember, any hardship, any mistake, any difficulty, any pain, stop and think. Don't stop and curse. Stop and think because generally what happens, instantly we stop and we begin yelling at the other people. We start screaming and we start cursing and fighting. Think, what did I do? Ya Allah, this happened by your will. 
you will this for me perhaps i did something wrong think about ourselves you know maybe i did something wrong yes i did something wrong definitely i did something wrong i don't know what i did ya allah you know better guide me tell me what is it that i did show me my mistake so that i can fix them if you really take a moment to think about it why why this thing happened why you are why you hurt yourself you will know exactly why perhaps an arrogant thought cross your mind perhaps some negative thought another individual cross your mind these are all effects of our sins yes allah also test people for other reasons but what we need to think is that when we are afflicted by hardship then remember allah willed it so who can take it away who can take it away only allah can take it away whether it is poverty hunger or illness remember this is the time when we call upon allah ya rab rabb ighfirli oh my lord forgive me i said i did something wrong you forgive me so he who recognize his lord he would seek forgiveness from allah at this time and then he will ask allah to remove the affliction from him when somebody hurts your feelings okay even this is a form of affliction when somebody yells at you they are upset with you this is also form of darr recall and think about the wrong that we have done and beg allah for forgiveness and then ask allah to create ease for you because even a relationship could be between husband and wife could be between brother and brother and could be between sister and sister mother and daughter even if a relationship is causing your grief if a beautiful relationship that was meant to bring peace in your life that was meant to produce love and mercy if that is causing you to cry day and night if that is causing your heart to ache that is darr from whom from from allah who can remove that darr only who can allah can so beg him to remove it ask him to remove it ask him to fix your situation for you for those who ask him then allah also respond to them allah also help them because when a person is in a state of difficulty he calls upon allah then what happens it it is because of the difficulty that he was led to allah so that difficulty that darr it becomes a stepping stone for him in his journey to allah subhanahu wa taala so always some darr comes ask allah beg allah ask forgiveness and amend our ways you know fix your own uh, like you know whatever the mistakes you did uh, there is a hadith a man asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is it that you call people to what is this religion about what do you teach prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i call to allah the exalted and majestic alone the one who when you are afflicted with some adversity you call upon him and he removes it from you when you are afflicted with the ear of famine and you call upon him he makes produce grow for you and the one who when you are in a desolate empty land and you get lost you call upon him he respond to you so when this man heard this he accept islam naam yes i believe in the lord like the because only he hear is only he responds nothing happens except by his will and nothing can change except by his will by the permission of allah wa huwa qahiru fawqa ibadihi ayah number 18 and he is the subjugator over his servants wa huwa al hakim al khabir and he is the wise the acquainted with all here qahir over his servant means he has full control over his creation over what he owns yet he has given us freedom freedom to do what to do what we please to make the choices that we want and then he will question us qul iya wa shay'in akbaru shahada say what thing is greatest in testimony say allah is witness between me and you 
and this Quran was revealed to me that I may warn you thereby whoever it reaches. This is in ayah number 19. The Quran was revealed to who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa For what purpose? So that he may warn people. Whoever this Quran reaches, the person is also warned by the Quran. So this Quran is for who? Quran is for all. It is for everybody. It is for everyone. Why? So that they may know the reality of this life. They may know the reality of what to come after death. They may know what is to follow after that death so that they may live their life properly. Do you truly testify that with Allah there are other gods? If you say so, say I will not testify with you. This means that if we, the whole world, say something wrong, can we agree with them? We cannot agree with them. Even if a person says with a lot of conviction that God has a son, God has children, then what Allah tell us, say, Allah ashhad. I do not testify. I do not agree with this. I do not confirm this. I agree. I disagree with this because it is not just enough to say I believe in Allah. What is necessary is that we also say I believe that Allah is only one God and there is no deity. La ilaha illallah. There is no God except Allah. Why is it necessary to say that? Because a person can only go to Jannah if he believes in Tawheed, Tawheed is complete with this negation and affirmation, negating every God except for who Allah, affirming him as the only God. And this is Tawheed, pure. When a person believes in pure Tawheed, lives by it only, then he is going to go to Jannah. Say, indeed, he is but one God. Indeed, I am free of what you associate with him. Prophet said, whoever will meet Allah without associating anything in worship with him will go to Jannah. Will go to Jannah mean ultimately that person is going to enter Jannah for sure. And in another hadith, we learn that he who worship Allah with Without associating any partner with him. Establish the prayer. Give zakat. Hears and obeys. Then Allah will admit him through. Any of the door of the Jannah that servant wants. That servant wants meaning all gates of Jannah will be open for him. And he will be to, told you choose. Where do you want to go from this one, this one, this one you know. And the Prophet Wasallam said, uh, Jannah has eight gates. So, tafattahu lahumul abwaab, the gates of Jannah will be open for them. And you choose, you want to go, but this is for who? Those who believe in Tawheed. And live by it, refrain from shirk. Then Allah would honor them that day. And shirk is zulmun azim. Ayah number 20. Those to whom we have given scripture, recognize it as they recognize their own sons. Those who will lose themselves in the hereafter, do not believe. And who is more unjust that one who invents a lie about Allah, denies his verses. Indeed, the wrongdoers will not succeed. And mention, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the day we will gather them all together. Then we will say to those who associate other than Allah, where are your partners that you used to claim with him? Then there will be no excuse upon the examination except they will say, by Allah, our Lord, we were not those who associated. Meaning that day they will deny having any form of shirk. Ayah number 24, see how they will lie about themselves and lost from them will be what they used to invent. And among them are those who listen to you. 
but we have placed over their hearts covering lest they understand it and in their ears deafness and if they should see every sign they will not believe in it even when they come to you arguing with you those who disbelieve say this is not but legends of the former people and i am number 26 and they prevent others from it meaning from the truth or from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and are the themselves remote from him the one who stops people from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in fact far from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because if we truly know him he would not stop people from him because we see that even there are people who do not believe in islam but when they have studied the life of uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then they have begun to appreciate prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they have begin to appreciate him and this is something that well known because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his personality is such that when you learn even one story about him it only grows you in love appreciation of that great uh, greatness of that human being is such a kind of person what a kind man he was what a different man he was even when you compare him with the prophets of uh, allah like isa al islam ibrahim al islam they will dissociate themselves from their nations the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he read those ayat he wept amati amati ya allah what about my nation what about my umma don't want them to be punished he was concerned for all people every individual even his enemies so much so that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made dua that o oh allah guide one of the two omars and who are they guide one of those two intelligent people and who were they one was umar radhiyallahu anhu and the other was who abu jahal can you imagine rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is praying that abu jahal be led to islam can you imagine that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is praying that hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu be led to islam he made dua for him if somebody gives us a dirty look even once just once one dirty look we hate them for life isn't it we treat them as our enemy every time you know we give a bad look but we shouldn't we should learn from our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we never accept a word of advice from them we hate them uh, with all our heart look at how forgiving and kind and generous prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we should learn from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we shouldn't be behaving mean way after learning so much so they prevent others from him and are themselves remote from him and they do not destroy except themselves but they perceive it not if you could but see when they are made to stand before the fire and will say oh would that we could be returned to life on earth and not deny the sign of our lord and be among the believers in ayah number 28 but what they concealed before has now appeared to them and even if they were written they would return to that which they were forbidden and indeed they are liars so here we have seen till ayah number 28 uh, here ayah number 29 wa qalu in hiya illa hayatuna dunya wa ma nahnu bi mabuthin and they say there is none but our worldly life this is only one life that's all that we are going to live there is no after life and we will not be resurrected because most of the people they don't believe in hereafter this is what they say with so much determination in ayah number 30 if you could but see when they will be made to stand before their lord remember this surah also teaches about akhira when people will made to stand before their lord he will say is this not the truth you rejected it but this is not the truth they will say naam yes by our lord 
he will then say, so taste the punishment because you used to disbelieve. Ayah number 31, Qad khasir al-lazina kathobu bil-liqa'illa. Those will have lost who deny the meeting with Allah. Those who do not believe in Akhirah. What does Allah say? What will they suffer? A tremendous loss. They are not going to be in a neutral state. No. They are going to suffer a loss, tremendous loss. Until when the hour of resurrection comes upon them, unexpectedly, they will say, Oh, how great is our regret over what we neglected concerning it. While they bear their burdens on their backs, unquestionably evil is that which they bear. What is this burden? What they will be carrying on their backs? The burden of sin, the burden of sin, imagine how embarrassing it would be that the sin of a person are weighed on his shoulders so that he will not able to hide them at all. In this world, are we willing to display our sins? Are we willing to tell other people, oh, today I didn't pray, Fajr, you know, can we say that? Can we say to somebody, can we publicize our sins today? Can we have our sins written all over us? No. If we stole something and that is uh, on our head, we are carrying it in our hand and can we walk around in front of people? Yes, I stole this. Can we do that? No. So just imagine that day, how embarrassing it's going to be. So imagine if somebody recorded us when we were getting upset with somebody. Imagine if those words were recorded. Imagine if somebody videotaped us. Then we were doing something wrong. And that video was put up on YouTube and the whole world watched it. Haven't we heard such in incidents things? So how it will be like this when they put up people and are not able to bear the embarrassment. They commit suicide, you know, because they can't bear that humiliation. And this has happened. They, they committed suicide and many people did that. But what about the time of Akhirah? Everything is displayed in front of people. What's going to happen? So we won't, we, if we don't want that embarrassment in the Akhirah, we have the time right now. We have to check ourselves. We have to correct ourselves. This is the only time we got it. Wama hayati dunya illa la ibum wallah. Ayah number 32. What is that prevent us from obeying Allah? What stops us from making repentance? It's life of this world. Allah says, and the worldly life is not but amusement and diversion. But the home of the hereafter is best for those who fear Allah. So will you not reason? Will you not reason? Will you not understand that this world, this life is deception? How is it deception? Because it's temporary. What do we think? What do we think? It's eternal. It's forever. So even if we want uh, one small thing, one small thing to fulfill basic need, what we do is spend hours and hours trying to fulfill the need, trying to find the most perfect option. Is it really worth? Is it really worth it? Why is it that we spend hours and days and months planning these things? Why? Because we think the house that we live in right now is permanent. The car that we are going to drive is permanent. The clothes we are going to wear are permanent. We think like that. We are deceived by this worldly life. And then we also think that this dunya, whatever is in it, it is beautiful. It is perfect. So we think, we seek the best options. Remember, if a person was to be given the place that is occupied by a stick, think about that place that can be occupied by a stick, this place in Jannah. If a person is given just this much place in Jannah, that is better than the world, whatever is in it. The world and whatever is in it. Saying Subhanallah. Say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha. These words, this kalima, 
what do they bring to a person janna heavy reward subhanallah wa bihamdi what does it do it fills the mizan it fills the scale and heavy reward but we keep putting away putting aside this good deeds and we think let me enjoy right right now let me have this thing that thing and we get lost these are the small things just i am mentioning only few words or a few kalimas on our tongue that also we keep forgetting subhanallah alhamdulillah that's so easy to say isn't it in ayah number 33 we know that you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are saddened what they say and indeed they do not call you untruthful but it is the verse of allah that wrong doers reject and certainly were messengers denied before you but they were patient over the effects of denial and they were harmed until our victory came to them and none can alter the words of allah and they had certainly come to you some information about the previous messenger ayah number 35 if their evasion is difficult for you meaning it's difficult for you to bear then if you are able to seek a tunnel into the earth or a stairway into the sky to bring them a sign then do so but if allah had willed he would have united them upon guidance so never be of the ignorant so the people would continuously you know demand from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam miracles they were shown some miracles but they kept demanding more and more miracles so over here prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is consoled that they should not believe because of miracles so don't ask for miracles why because if a person will believe just because he has seen a miracle then that quickly also his faith will leave truth should be accepted why because of accepting it as a true not because of some miracle that happened because of recognizing it understanding it to be true inna ma yastajibu allazina yasma'un ay number 36 and only those who hear will respond who can respond the one who listens the one those who are willing to listen interested in listening those who desire the truth that even if they had to bear hardship in listening to truth they will still listen wal mauta yabathuhum allah but the dead those people who whose hearts are dead their conscience is dead if somebody's heart is dead their conscience is dead isn't it allah will resurrect them meaning you cannot do anything about them then to him they will return i number 37 and they say why has a sign not been sent down to him from his lord say indeed allah is able to send down a sign but most of them do not know there is no creature on within the earth or a bird that flies with its wings except that they are communities just like you we have not neglected in the register a thing then unto their lord they will be gathered everything is you know there in the register but those who deny our verses are deaf and dumb within darkness whoever allah wills he leaves astray and whoever he wills he put them on a straight path wa man yasha yaj'alu ala siratim mustaqim ihdina sirat almustaqim oh allah guide us to straight path say have you considered if there come to you the punishment of allah or there come to you the hour is it other than allah you would invoke if you should be truthful so here in ayah number 40 remember that part of believing in allah's oneness is to dedicate all acts of worship prayer sacrifice hope trust exclusively to for whom allah subhanahu wa taala so over here we are asked when you are in difficulty then who do you call upon allah 
बल इट इज हेम अलोन यू वुड इन वोक एंड ही वुड रिमूव दैट फॉर विच यू इन वोक हिम इफ ही विल एंड यू वुड फॉर गॉड वॉट यू एसोसिएट विद हिम आई नंबर फोर्टी वन वॉट हैपन वेन वी आर इन डिफिकल्टी initially we think about okay let me take some tylenol okay let me take some rest let me take a break let me sleep let me ask this person let me ask that person but then still if the pain does not go away if the pr- pr- problem does not go away then what happens eventually it takes very long for some people and some people are quick to do this eventually we fall to our knees we fall into sujood and we beg allah subhanahu wa taala we humble ourselves and we ask him for help allah says that the loss from that is what you sent to like you know make sajda beg allah subhanahu wa taala do not associate any partner but wa tansau ma tushrikun then you forgot them we we learn about one um, ikrama sahabi radiyallahu anhu that how when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam conquered manka he left he fled he said i am not staying here and i am not accepting islam there is no way i am going to stay here he left he went boarded a ship went to the sea and what happened there was a huge storm and everybody first started calling upon their idols and then one by one they started calling upon allah alone no this idol is not helping no that one is not helping this is not helping so call only allah so he realized that if i am calling upon allah alone here at sea knowing that only allah can help me then that is exactly muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been calling people to then we should call upon allah alone so he left everything and he went to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and embraced islam many times it happens you know that allah puts people in hardship in difficulty we don't understand why we think allah is rahman rahim why is this person going through so much hardship you know why because allah wants us to become humble because some people they do remember allah when they are within blessings and other people they have to be broken up their heart has to be shattered their life has to fall apart for them to realize then they need somebody who somebody who knows them somebody who understand them who can that be the one who made the and one who made everything else that is allah nobody else only allah can i number 42 and we have already sent messengers to nations before you oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then we seize them with the poverty and the hardship and that perhaps la allahum yatadarraun perhaps they might humble themselves to us so whenever we see hardship in our lives when we see hardship in this world in the lives of the other people don't think how could allah do that no Allah does not intend injustice for his servants what does he want he want that they fulfill the purpose of their lives he want that they should recognize Allah and to be humble towards Allah i number 43 then why when our punishment came to them did they not humble themselves but their hearts become hardened and shaitan made attractive to them that which they were doing many people even when they are put in the hardship they don't humble themselves why because they are still in the trap of shaitan shaitan keeps telling you know what you are doing is good what you are doing is best you know even though they are astray they are on the dalala they are on the wrong path still shaitan is instigating falam manasu ma zukkiru bihi so when they forgot that why which they had been reminded we open to them the doors of every good thing until when they rejoiced in that which they were given we seized them suddenly and they were then in despair i number 44 
So what do we see here that if a person continues to receive Allah's blessing despite disobedience, despite sin, despite continuous and deliberate sins, then what is it that? This is the beginning of punishment. This is the beginning of punishment. People, you know, they think, oh, Allah is happy with me even though I am disobedient to Allah, disobeying Allah, but Allah is... But what this ayah is teaching us because when a person does something wrong at first, he made to suffer so that he realize it. When he realize but he does not repent, he does not change himself, then what happens? He makes that mistake again. He commits that sin again. Then what happens? Again he feels bad. Something happens, makes him feel bad. But then after a couple of times, he says, oh, nothing happening. Oh, you know what? I was thinking that I was suffering because of my sin. Because I have been brainwashed. There is no God. There is no, no day of judgment. No. Then what happens? A person thinks, oh, oh look, since I left Islam, I am happy for since I left praying, since I stopped my hijab, I have regained my confidence. That's what people think. Nazbillah, astaghfirullah. Have you ever heard such statements? People talking, you know, uh, uh, their confidence, they are comparing with the, you know, not having the appropriate modesty and they think that's okay to do that. People taking confidence in the sins that they are doing, feeling happy about the disobedience. And they are committing. Why is this happening? You wonder that, okay, really when you compare their present situation with their past situation, they are much happier now. Isn't it? Have you seen many people around us? All the doors have been opened here. Why? Because Allah left them. Whatever they do. Because they are doing so much disobedience. They are happier after they left Islam. They are happier when they left hijab. Why? This is istiraj. This is the beginning of the punishment. And Prophet ﷺ said, when you see that Allah gives to a servant in this world blessings despite his sin, then indeed it is istiraj. Means gradually when a person is led towards punishment, that he is given his freedom, he is given his space. Okay, so what do you want to and what happens instantly without any warning? He is seized. So we need to reflect on our lives now. We need to reflect on ourselves. There, that there, there are things in my life which are clearly wrong. There is no question about that. It is wrong when it, it comes to my salat. Perhaps I am negligent. When it comes to treating my parents. Perhaps I am disrespectful. When it comes to dealing with my husband, perhaps I am disrespectful. These are the sins and we forgot. And these are the sins that they are real mistakes. But if despite that we get food, we have house, we have happy life, we get to have fun, we get to enjoy, then perhaps we are in big danger. This danger nobody sees, you know. People only see the people who are going through a test. Like, you know, they have a lack of uh, financial problem or lack of anything, worldly thing. They think, oh, they are being tested. But what about the people who have been given everything even though they are doing disobedience? That is the bigger test. Perhaps they are in the more danger than comparing to others because Allah says Allah will seize them. So people that committed wrong were eliminated in ayah number 45. Allah says they were eliminated and removed and praised to Allah, Lord of the world. Say, have you considered if Allah should take away your hearing and your sight and set a seal upon your hearts, which deity other than Allah could bring them back to you? Look how we diversify the words, then they still turn away. Means look at uh, your hands take your hands and look at them look at your hands we who made them who gave them to you feel your ears touch your everything you know everything allah made it it's a big gift our life is a big gift we are on tawheed is a big gift but we ignore that thing see have you considered if punishment of allah should come to you unexpectedly or manifestly will any be destroyed but the wrongdoing people 
48 ayah and we sent not the messenger except as a bringer of good tidings and the warner. So whoever believes and reforms, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. But those who deny our verses, the punishment will touch them for their defined disobedience. Ayah number 50, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I do not tell you that I have the depositories containing the provision of Allah or that I know the unseen, nor do I tell you that I am an angel. I only follow what is revealed to me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that. Say, it's the blind equivalent to the seeing. Then will you not thought, give a thought? So we are invited to give thought so that we may recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the real giver is who? Allah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am just a distributor, but the grants is from Allah. Innama ana Allahu yata. So people, when they give us something, who are they? They are just distributing. They are just passing on what was given to them, passing on. Who is giving actually? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَنزِرْ بِهِ الَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ أَنْ يُحْشَرُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ And born by the Qur'an, those who fear and they will be grand, gathered before their Lord. We all have to gather one day before Allah. For them besides Him, Allah will be no protector, no intercessor. And that they might become righteous. Warn them by the Qur'an. Why? so that they may become righteous. So how is it that a person improves the state of his heart? How is it that he grows in his good action and in good deeds? How when he has a Quran sitting on his shelf, when they have Quran app on their phone, what is it that a person will truly increase in guidance? When he takes warning from the Quran, for what we have to Something we have to sit and read and go through that. Just um, Quran is sitting in the shelf or app in your phone doesn't work until unless you read and understand it and implement it. I number 50, 52 and do not send away those who call upon their Lord morning and evening seeking his countenance not upon you is anything of their account and not upon them is anything of your account. So were you to send them away, you would then be of the wrongdoers. So Prophet ﷺ told keep company with those who are close to Allah, those who remember Allah, even if they have lesser worldly status than you. You even then, even if the only thing common between you and them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iman, still have those companies. And here, uh, remind, uh, they will remind of Allah seeing their Iman, you know, having good company, righteous company. And Masalu Nurihi Tamashkati Fiha Misbaha. And this was mentioned in uh, Surah Al-Nur. What is that Zujaja? What is that glass case that is around the lamp? Many scholars, they interpret it as a righteous company. Because the flame of Iman, it is, must be surrounded by good company. Why? Because then good company will protect it. It will protect that Iman. It will also make it look beautiful. Because think about it. If we ourselves, one person, all of us individually, if we are sitting at home and reading Quran, just the translation like this, would it be able to stop and reflect? Would be able to do? No, we would probably just come through quickly. But you know, if we are surrounded with a good company, that will help us more. So always surround yourself with the good company, with the good people who have the um, Iman and the Tawheed. So Prophet ﷺ said, don't send them away. But the thing was, these Sahaba, many of them were poor. 
so there were people who were not muslim they did not like that they should sit next to this poor people but because of iman always rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam invite such people it's not only prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at the other prophets also even nu alaihi wasallam did the same thing you know they didn't like it but um, that's how our prophets used to be you know so we should follow the footsteps of our prophets and i number 53 and thus we have tried some of them through others that the disbelievers might say is it these whom allah has favored among us is not allah most knowing of those who are grateful alaisa allah bi alamu bi shakirin allah knows who is most grateful we can claim only i am very grateful i am very grateful allah knows who is truly grateful i number 54 and when those come to you who believe in our verses say peace be upon you your lord has decreed upon himself mercy then any one of you who does not wrong out of ignorance and then repent after that and correct himself indeed allah is forgiving and merciful here forgiving and merciful to who those who made a mistake and then repent they correct themselves they reform and they take a step also right because you see when they come to you they are making the effort to learn they are making effort to find out those who put in the effort and then once they find out oh i was wrong i need to be i need to do this and they correct themselves then allah is forgiving and merciful to them wa kazalika nufassilu alayati wal tasti wal tas tabina sabilu almujrimi and thus do we detail the verses thus the way of criminals will be evident say indeed i have been forbidden to worship those who invoke besides allah say i will not follow your desires for i would then have gone astray and i would not be of the rightly guided say indeed i am on clear evidence from my lord you have denied it and you do not have that for which you are impatient the decision is only for allah he relates the truth and he is the best of the deciders i number 58 say if i had that for which you are impatient means the punishment you keep demanding for from me the matter would have been decided decided between me and you but allah is most knowing of the wrong doer but in the whom mafatihul ghaib and with him are the keys of unseen none knows them except allah so the real power and strength is with who allah and he knows what is on the land what is in the sea uh, we don't know everything allah knows about it and here we see wa yalumu ma fil barri wal bahr and he knows what is on the land what is in the sea wa ma tasqutu min waraqatin illa yalamuha not a leaf fall but he knows it means not a tear fall except that he knows it and no grain is there within the darkness of the earth no moist or dry thing but it is written in the clear record so everything is allah is noticing it is recorded in ayah number 60 and it is he who takes your souls by the night and knows that what you have committed by day then he revives you there in that a specified time may be fulfilled then to him will be your return then he will inform you about what you used to do so here we did till ayah number 60 the rest will continue in the next class we did suratul anam from 1 to 60 and here most of the topic was on tauhid jazakallah khairan kaseera subhanakallah wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah